So hi guys, it's me, Canada I get here, and it's been a while since I did a Sun and Moon video, and I'm really sorry about that. I know there are tons of Pokemon that have been released, and I haven't covered them. I just haven't just haven't found the time, or just even been wanting to do it. So, um, yeah, and I won't be going all of them. I'm going to be going over the recent Sun and Moon video. And I'm going to be going over some features and things like that that, um that are in Sun and Moon, and also, I have my window open, so there's going to be some noise, so, uh, please excuse that as much as possible, I'm, I'm sorry, I just, it's kind of, it feels really good outside, so, I thought that I'd open all the windows up and stuff, so, yeah, just, try, please try to ignore that as much as possible. So, here is the new video, it's called Ultra Beast and the Ether Foundation, Debut in Pokemon Sun and Moon, or at least that's what it says up here. There are also other things I'm going to be talking over, like, we recently, not too long ago, um, actually, I have no idea, um, we found the new team organization called Team Skull, and I will be talking about that, because we will be needing a new character from Team Skull that got released, called Gideon, G Gison, Gison, I, I have no idea how to pronounce those. So, let's get started. So, new discoveries in the Alola region of Sun and Moon. We got Type Null, which is kind of, uh, hang on, let me see if I can get this going again, come on. Uh, let me, Type Null, um, he has the, I know that's cut off right there, but he's a normal type, which is kind of weird because he's kind of a mixture of everything, I mean, he's supposed to be, he is, since, um, he has the synchronized, syn Sink or something Pokemon, he's type normal. Um, he has the ability battle armor, which makes sense being that what he's covered in. Um, we can see that he's definitely a unique type because he has quite a mixture of different things. You can see he has like a, a water Pokemon uh, fin tail. You can see he has a, a sort of like a mammal, a mammal type legs, like you would see on a dog or something. And then you see like these bug, like, like, almost like Scyther, I guess, like, legs or something, and then you see this head armor thing, which is weird, and then you have this thing, whatever that is, um, this Pokemon wears, wearing a mask, uh, as you can see, he, I'm reading the description now, um, has been dubbed Null, meaning nothing, um, which is strange because he is, he is certainly something, alright, <laughs> I want to say he's nothing. Um, the shape uh, of the front legs and hind legs are clearly different. The reason is that Type Null it was constructed to synchronize the strengths of various Pokemon, enabling it to adapt to any situation. The mask fitting Type Null head is a piece of equipment designed to control and latent power. It is extremely heavy, so it also has also serves to hinder Type Null's agility. Um, to complete the certain mission, there needs to be a Pokemon powerful enough to rival the Pokemon often spoken in mythology. So that's pretty much all that's type null. It doesn't really give us a lot. It gives us just general description of it, like what it looks like and stuff, and its mask, which I'm, I'm still confused on that, uh, is designed to control its latent powers. Um, it's extremely heavy, and it serves to hinder null's agility. So I guess it's sort of like... Uh, I guess if you explain it, it's not like Mewtwo's me uh, machine suit thing that Giovanni gives him in the movie. It's sort of control his powers, as he said, and uh, sort of, I guess, what it is is to control it and to sort of, you know, hinder him in some way so he's not too powerful and he's not too, you know, out of control, probably. So, yeah, he is definitely a cool-looking Pokemon. I gotta admit, um, he's really cool-looking and... Uh, I don't know if we'll ever have him in the team. I feel like he's one Pokemon you probably wouldn't have unless it's, like, a special thing. So, yeah. Um, I know my video is acting weird. It's, it's loading. Um, let's see. There's Type Null, if you can guys see it. And there's our character battling him. Uh, I know it's it's loading. Um, the next Pokemon is Jimmy Joe. It's a dragon type Pokemon, 
And um, I know I'm sorry for my video. It's, it's floating. I guess I should probably play it and have it going at least. So that way if it does start, <laughs> I can always pause it. Uh, Jimmy Joe is called the Scaly Pokemon. It is a dragon type. It has the abilities bulletproof and soundproof. I guess it would make sense being bulletproof because it has all those skills. I actually kind of like the the heart on its head. It actually looks kind of cute. Um, Jean Jean Joe Jimmy Joe. I think it's how to I have no idea how to pronounce this. Has the pride of a warrior. <laughs> Starts off with a story. Uh, although it remains humble, it is capable in a pursuit to becoming strongest. It is never neglecting its tra training because Jimmy Joe uses scales on its forehead to sense the defense and never turns back from its enemies. Many trainers have seen this po behavior and take it as a proof that Jimmy Joe is a valiant Pokemon. Jimmy Joe gathers in harsh lo locations like canyons and other where no pe where no other Pokemon or people are around to live together and train. That's kind of cool Pokemon. I wonder what it's going to evolve to. Um, if it's like it's a dragon type, which looks like it, but I'm curious what its evolution is going to be like. I mean, it doesn't. It ha we don't have an evolution for it. I'm going to assume that it's going to evolve, being that it's called the Warrior. It's basically if Crown Sport is going to get stronger and uh, more. So yeah. Um, we see. It fighting uh, another Pokemon. This is a school form Pokemon or something like that. I forget what its name is. Its name. Let me look it up real quick. Um, and where is that Pokemon? I don't see. Oh, here it is. Here is the Pokemon I'm talking about. Uh, Wishy Wash Solo form. That's its solo form. And here is that other Pokemon, the Pokemon we said, which was school form. And so, yeah, it's, it's actually kind of a cool Pokemon. But we're not going to talk about that because that would be way too much. So, we're going to look at Raticate. So, recently, something that I think is such a cool idea for Pokemon Sun and Moon is having a low lock form. So what a low lock forms are basically are taking a Pokemon, uh, like as we see a first generation Pokemon Eradicate, and we also have a Rattata, which is its pre evolution, um, a low lock form too. It's basically in changing it up. These Pokemon have adapted to the Alola region, and Rattata. We have Rattata. I have Rattata on my phone. Being the description now is. Of course, the mouse Pokemon. It is a dark normal type, and I'll get back to that dark, that double typing because I think that's actually kind of confusing because I don't understand why it needs to be a dark and normal type. But it allows you to try to change its forms as a result of their battle for the territory of Rangu. Uh, unlike ordinary Pokemon, urban Reds has open areas are the Alola region Reds has main habitat. They are nocturnal and live in live in nests of Several dozens eradicates or serve as their boss. They are they are countermeasures to the exploring Rattata's population. There are the Lola region are so important to be releasing and better to avoid a Rangu. Rattata changes their preferred environment to circline rhythms. These adapt adaptations in their new environment lead to change. Lola region's Rattata are excellent uh, capable in stuffing delicious fresh food from the Alala region. They pay no mind attention to food that aren't fresh. So, yeah, that is it. it it's basically, I know you guys can't see Rattata, but um, it's actually pretty cool of uh, Pokemon, and I kind of, I like it. I mean, I've never been a fan of Rattata, but I do like the uh, Rattata in the Lola region. It looks kind of cool, and it kind of matches Rattata's uh, form in general, I mean, Red Hat, I think, has always been defined as sort of a fierce looking Pokemon anyway, sort of mean. So, Raticate, the mouse Pokemon, another normal dark type, has the ability Glutton and Hustle, I think. Uh, because of the urban areas, they are mainly inhabited, their main habitat, uh, their diet is higher in calories than Oral Raticate. 
As a result, they become hefty. So I probably they probably get like, um, probably uh, since they probably li they live in cities, so they probably get like fast foods and trash that have been thrown away, or even food that had been given to them from the uh, ratata that had probably been even stolen from people. Um, so yeah, it's probably just really fattening foods and stuff. Um, of all regions, Radicate prefer to only eat to eat only fresh food. Fruit and high class ingredients is other rumors that uh, certain top now trash ones take advantage of the little eradicate to taste buds to bring along choose ingredients to buy. Oh well, not really fast food, but that's actually kind of a neat thing because it reminds me of um, Slurpuff in Pokemon uh, X and Y in the episode where Slurpuff, uh, where what's that one girl that's challenging Serena? Slurpuff smells the. Uh, Milk to see which is the freshest. I think that was slow puff. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of, that, that makes sense. I mean, I guess that would make sense if you were a chef. So I guess if we battle any chefs in Pokemon Center, room, they're possibly going to have any chefs or waiters. They're possibly going to have a Radicate on their team on their team. So mm, it's actually kind of neat. Um, Radicate constantly stockpiles huge amounts of food in their nest. They mostly prefer to stand out in the stand out. Little reach and fry attack, gather food while they themselves stay at home in their nest, just eating. Not oh, lazy. Uh, Little reach and fry Kate is a totem Pokemon in the trial that takes place in Cairn May in Cavern of Melee Island in Moon. It summon Pokemon. It summons Pokemon to help and comfort those who take it on the trial. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Gumshoe appears in a totem Pokemon a Valiant Cave in Sun. So, apparently in Pokemon Sun and Moon, the, uh, instead of having gyms, we have trials. Um, I know I've, uh, since I haven't done it, I haven't talked about anything new. So, apparently in Pokemon Sun and Moon, we have something called trials instead of gyms. And we each get in, in there, you battle a Pokemon. So, apparently in Pokemon Sun and Moon, we're going to have, depending on which game you play, will depend on what Pokemon you're going to battle. So, that's actually kind of cool, too, taking advantage of the whole sort of, you know, uh, Pokemon games that tend to have different Pokemon depending on which game you play. So, yeah, taking advantage of that by having gems uh, instead of by having the trial thing. And I kind of like that Raticate summons Raticate to help comfort those who take on the trials, sort of confront those who take on the trials, like, yeah, we're not going to battle. We're going we're gonna to leave that to the others. <laughs> So, um, yeah, uh, there have been tons of Alola forms released. Um, one of my favorites that's been shown was Ninetales and Vulpix's Alola forms, which are snow forms, so, which are, uh, ice types, and I think that's pretty cool, and I would love to see more Alola region forms in, uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon. So, next thing, so, oh yeah, by the way, it's dark and normal type. Which, I never understood that. I don't know why it has to be both. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm confused by that. Um, it does like, it should either be just normal type or dark type. But I guess being that it's confused, but being that it's also just a normal Raticate, it just has the dark type slapped onto it. Just because it's just normal Raticate, just fiercer and meaner. That it's probably just that. So I guess it makes a little sense, but I don't know. Um... So, Pokemon Sun and Moon has a set, uh, are set 12 hours apart. So, from what I heard by watching Mike J TV's video, is that depending on which game you choose, the time is going to be different. So, from what I heard is that if you play Pokemon Moon and you're playing it during the day, it's most likely going to be at night. So, let me, uh, cool features. So, I'm going to look this up. Uh, through, uh, uh, through analyzation and secrets of different worlds, Sun and Moon and Pokemon. Some of the Pokemon that appear in Sun and Moon are different. That's, what's more than a difference is the way it's set in the two games. The concept, uh, the, except for the few scenes, time in Pokemon Sun and Moon is actually, is tied to actual time. Pokemon Sun and Moon operate on the same system as your 3DS, but, but time in the Pokemon world of Moon shifts by 12 hours. Pokemon, some of the Pokemon appear in Pokemon Sun and Moon are different, including Solgaleo and Lunala, which are whole cookie to the story. So, which, so, 
Yeah, being that it Pokemon Center Moon, it would make sense to have the times different than the other games that we've seen, which day and I see some being that Pokemon Sun and Moon has a moon and a sun, so the time ever so time is gonna be a huge factor in with the game. So I think that's actually a cool idea. Um so yeah, um so I kinda I kinda like that. Um so let's see what next is on it. Uh certain events will play out different. So as we see, we see that the uh, uh, we see that these are the challenges. We see Gumshoe, which is the evolved form of Yuzu, Yugon, or whatever that weird Pokemon, if you guys are a uh, weird looking Pokemon. Um, and then we see that Raticate is the other one. And so, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, I kind of like that. I kind of like the differences. And then next is something that I... I don't know if I can get all of it to be okay. Introducing the Ether Ether Foundation. What the Ether Foundation is is something really new. If I can find it, Alola region. Uh, okay, here the Ether Foundation. The Ether Foundation is apparently a new. It's not really a team, but it's more like I guess you could say an organization or a foundation in a sense. Um, the Ether Foundation works in the OLR region. The Foundation's goal is to care for Pokemon that have been hurt. The Ether Foundation has constructed an artificial island. So, if you guys remember in back when I first did it, we looked at the whole Pokemon Sun region map, and we saw this strange island that did look natural. It was definitely man-made. Um, well, apparently that island belongs to the Ether Foundation, and they use that to help Pokemon. Um, constructed uh, Ether Paradise. It is not only provides shelter for Pokemon, but also constructs various research projects. It seems that the main character will be able to visit the Paradise, uh, the island, during its adventure. So we have a couple of characters. Um, the girl right here is called Luzmin. Um, she is a lovely Luzmin foundation. She is the president. We have this guy who I guess is the sort of like the scientist or something. He looks like it. Um, which okay, I'm gonna talk about this near uh, after I get done with the video. I'm gonna talk about this and what their possible goal is because we still don't know a lot about them. The Ether Foundation's branch and sports green sunglasses. Yes, he's rocking those same green sunglasses. That he is a signature accessory. He seems to be proud of his posture position in the branch. I, it doesn't say what he is, but I'm going to assume he's like the scientist. He looks like a scientist. And then a wiki, which is this girl, is the assistant branch officer, uh, chief of the Ether Paradise. She's caring personally. Also loved, she's loved by all the Ether Foundation employees. And then we have just the employees, like you would find on the Evil Dorm. These, these are the equivalent of the grunts for any Evil organization. They're just generic characters. Uh, the employees of the Foundation Shelter care for Pokemon in uniforms appear to be depending on to, uh, which division they belong to. So, I have no idea which division they belong to in this one. So yeah, that's them. And there is, we don't know really a lot about them other than what it gives. And there have been, there's actually a theory out there uh, that I want to talk about that uh, Michael JTV did that I actually kind of agree on. I, I like this theory. Um, so yeah, that's them. Um, there's Ilmuze, she's the owner, um, president. Um, here is Faba, Fabo, Faba, the branch chief. Which, he, to me, he kind of looks like a scientist in a weird way. Maybe he is, and he's just, they just call him, they just, that's his prison, but he's also a scientist. Here is the assistant branch chief. Um, I kind of like her design. I mean, she looks like a mother type. She definitely looks like a caring person, a motherly type. So, yeah. Um, and there's the employees. Uh, Fighting Team Skull, the new team, evil team for this one. Um, so, yeah, and I will talk about them in a minute. Um, here is the Team Skull Enforcer, which I'm going to assume he's sort of like the sort of 
mini boss almost. You have to like defeat him maybe some a couple of times. So I'm gonna talk about him now and Team Skull too. So let's talk about them. Team Skull, the new evil team. In Yellow Law region, Team Skull cares a lot about uh, cares causes a lot of trouble and steals other people's Pokemon. So yeah, the new evil team. This is Gledeon, I think. Um, a young young man leads to his strength and Team Skull, he's an enforcer. He places a high value on being strong in Pokemon battles and his partner is type No, which actually I kind of find that interesting. His type his his Pokemon is type No, the Pokemon at the beginning that I talked about. So that's actually kind of I'm also curious how you got type No. I mean I mean it looked like type No was specifically like Designed in like a lab or something, so it's at least it's what it sounds like. And then the boss of the team, Team Skull's boss, Guzme. Um, Guzme is the boss of Team Skull who holds a who holds the other ruffians together. Guzme pours on the attacks and battling without mercy. He certainly does seem strong, but he claims to be one of those who never could become a captain. Who could become captain? He seems to also want to pick a fight with Professor Kui Kukui as well. And then we have another person called Team Skull's admin, um, Prolarine, Prolarine, uh, yeah. there anymore. So there's Gideon again, um, that's pretty much it. Um, Prolarine is considered to be the big sister of Team Skull. She's a young, she's a tough lady who works to keep Team Skull in line and together, who always seems to be constructed. Uh, she cares about, she cares for the grunts who are below her in the pecking order. She does not let, let it go if someone is giving them a whooping. So she's kind of like the equivalent of Wiki in the sense that she cares for them. That's actually kind of cool. And then we have grunts, both male and female, and, you know, generic. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, um, for them. They, they don't, there's not really a lot of information. It, it's kind of seeming that there might be like the equivalent of Team Rock in the sense that they only want to steal Pokemon and stuff, since it seems that's what they are. They just seem to be thugs and stuff. They don't seem to be like anything important to them. So I'm kind of, which, which leads into this theory at the end of the video that I really want to talk about, because I kind of do believe it, um... Uh, next is, oh, what is the other one? We have the Trial Captains, which seems to only be four of them. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's different trial trials. I think one, two, three, four, at least for right now, as I see. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, also something else I want to talk about, if I can find it. Um, I don't know if it is. You guys remember these two characters, right? Uh, I have not played Pokemon Sun and Moon in a while, so I have not... I don't really know who they are, but if I can find it, I don't know if where it's at. I might not be able to find it, but apparently these two characters right here, one Pokemon X and Y with Professor Sycamore, and they give you the uh, Zygarde Cube... So that way you can collect Zygarde. See, uh, you get strange objects stuck to the Zygarde cube, which you get from these two people. And I don't seem to be able to find it, so I might not be able to find it. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it um, for them. And that's you get take photos. You can also take. This is a cool feature: is that you can take photos. Of Pokemon in the game. It kind of it's sort of like the equivalent of Pokemon snapping away. Um, so yeah, that's it's actually really cool and I, I like that. Um, I don't know if you can put these online or not, but yeah, I think that uh, would be cool to take full Pokemon. And then we have something that is definitely new. We have Ultra Beast. This is basically the ending of the video. We have something called the UP01. And this one, um, okay, let me explain. In the Alola region, rumors are flying that a mysterious creatures, serious creatures known as Ultra Beast, Ultra Beast possess mighty power and they compose a 
threat to human and Pokemon, so they are feared. It appears to be the Ether Foundation also conducting research on the Ultra Beast. According to rumors, multiple Ultra Beasts exist and they could have called in codenames. So the only one we know of we call UB01 or UB1. Um, body is composed of glass-like substance, which actually kind of looks kind of cool. Um, uh, so yeah. Um, the glass substance, however, is constantly changing shape and never settling on one. While evidences of some t something survival and things can be observed, uh, it doesn't. It has will of its own, and no one knows if it's a will of its own or any emotions. It sometimes its movement sometimes resembles that of a young girl. So this what leads into what could possibly be Team Ether's possible motive is that they might be the evil organization for this because Team Skull. There's really nothing about Team Skull that screams like they're really friendly because if you think about it. The last couple of games of Pokemon have always had the Team Evo organization causing some type of huge world-like threat to Pokemon. Um, but Team Skull doesn't seem like that. They just seem like bugs and stuff. So could possibly Team Ether be the organization? That would be kind of cool and a nice twist because it's never happened before. So yeah, um... See, that's pretty much all it, and that theory came from Mike JTV, my, uh, Mike, um, not my, um, something JTV, I don't know, he's another YouTuber, um, so yeah, it's possible that they, in the end, at some point in the game, could be changed to be the organism, because they just, they don't seem right, especially this guy right here, the, the scientist looking dude doesn't seem very right. He seems like he could be evil, um, but then again, you know, I could be totally wrong, but I think that would be kind of a nice twist if it turns out that they were the evil organization, and we have to team up with Team Skull to fight them, and Team Skull has to take them on, and so yeah, that would be actually kind of neat. It would be sort of like a wolf in sheep's clothing type of thing, where, you know, these people who present them as good, caring people who love Pokemon only in the end want to do something bad. Um, so yeah, I kind of like that. And it's possibly going to be doing something with the Ultra Beast and maybe even the Legendaries as well. So yeah, um, this is pretty much all it. I did cover a lot of stuff. I covered mostly the important things that are going to be going on with the story and characters. I know I haven't done a video like this in a long time, but I really wanted to do this again. And there was and so much information that I wanted to cover, and I just haven't yet. But yeah, I, I at least I'm covering what's going on at least with the story. It's definitely something new. I've well, a lot. I know last couple of videos I've only talked about the Pokemon, and I know my throat is sort of like going out right now. But yeah, um, I hope you guys really did enjoy this video, and let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Also, something else. I also like to believe that Lily, Mr. Uh, Professor Kukui's assistant, uh, is also part of Team uh, Ether because, mostly because she definitely does look like she'd be a part of Team Ether. She definitely is dressed in white just like them. And she is very mysterious, so maybe she's also part of Ether and she's just working with Professor to get information and stuff from him on Pokemon or something out there so that way she can relate it to Team Ether and stuff like she's like a spy or something. So yeah, um, it's pretty much it. There is another thing and that apparently we are getting a new character called Professor um, uh, Samson. Simon, uh, what he is, is he is apparently Professor, uh, Oak's cousin, apparently, um, he apparently is, um, a famous authority on Pokemon, Re he is, those, he takes root in the Alola region, um, he is his cousin, we don't know anything else, we don't know if he's a professor, or if he deals with Pokemon or anything, but yeah, I thought that might be a neat thing to, uh, cover, and, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and really I would like to know your comments down below what you think of Team Ether anyway. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and um, yeah, uh, so I'm gonna 
sign off and uh, goodbye. <laughs>